Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here and back in probably February or late January, early February of this year, I built this guy right here, which is the Emu Pi mini arcade cabinet. Um, I was super stoked on this. This is one of the, I think, coolest projects I have ever done. Um, not only because it's functional and actually is a full-blown working arcade with full-size buttons and joysticks, but this is like the first big thing that I've modeled into a project that is 100% that of my own. Well, just like I'm sure many people that have ever made anything, the second I was done with this, I already wanted to make version two, um, but <laughs> I, I couldn't. I had to wait a little while, and uh, I just finished version two this last uh, week here. I mean, literally yesterday, the day before, I just finished it. So, not taking into consideration because I know that color scheme is going to be major personal preference like I'm a big fan of the the gray on white and blue I think it turned out looking really nice and some people might like the louder green um, but that's not what's important what we're going to talk about are the differences in terms of things I did to upgrade this one to this one um, this this arcade just like this one will be on Thingiverse with all the files and all of the links to all the electronics and where I purchased them from um, so that way you can build this one if you'd like to uh, but yeah let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that I did differently between the first one and this one which we'll call V2 so a quick kind of rundown really quickly actually of some of the hardware that went into it um, the green was all printed on the Ender 3 it is Matter Hackers uh, Pro Series Translucent Green PLA. Uh, the black is Matter Hacker's Build Series Black PLA. Um, the joystick and buttons were ordered from Banggood, which a link will be in the description and on the Thingiverse page. Uh, LCD, C LCD screen, excuse me, is also the exact same as on the first one. It's a seven inch HDMI LCD screen that is also from Banggood that um, is really, really impressive for a pretty low cost. So um, that is the one I went ahead and used again. Uh, as far as inside hardware wise, we have got a Raspberry Pi 3. We've got a little Adafruit speaker bonnet with two little speakers, um, an HDMI cable, a extension USB cable in the front here, and then just a power cable along with a micro SD card. And that's pretty much, other than some LEDs, that's pretty much everything that went into this project. So. Some of the iterations that I did between the first one and this one were clearly the USB port in the front. That was kind of a big deal for me. Um, I wanted to, as much as like, you know, it's fun to play with the joystick and buttons. There's certain times where I want to play like a Super Nintendo game or a, a regular NES game and I want to use like an NES style controller. Well, now you've got a USB port right here that you can plug into and uh, easily unplug and plug in controllers uh, externally. So. That in itself was a pretty big upgrade to me. Um, I've also got a USB to USB, um, like a one to two splitter, so that way you can plug in two controllers and that way you can play with your buddies um, with like little NES style controllers. So I thought that was pretty cool. Second thing I did was I took this front portion and I slanted it downward. Um, the reason I did that was because it gives you a little bit more clearance when playing between the top of the joystick and the bottom of the screen, which um, it wasn't really blocking before, but I still think it's nice to have a little bit more clearance. Um, aside from that, I also made it where it is about an inch shorter on the backside to save plastic. Um, on the first one, I didn't know how much room I would need in the back for all the electronics, so I gave myself tons of room, way too much room. So on this one, I was able to cut back, which will save you on plastic and print time, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I also redid the speakers uh, just the way the speaker grills are, and I added these additional caps that you can print out and glue in place. It just kind of makes it, I think it looks cleaner uh, because I was having some issues with stringing and a bit of um, just not as clean looking because it prints sideways. So you can print the caps flat and they just go right over the existing grills 
and uh, I think it looks a lot better. Um, so that was one thing I did. Um, another thing that I did was I redid the whole back portion of the arcade to make it easier to access if you need to. So the back door for the original one was just two plastic parts that were bolted together and then it just popped in and you would stick your finger where the, the um, cable outlet was and pull that out to pop it out. But it was a really snug fit and it was a real pain in the ass to get out and back in. Um, so I opted to not go that route on this one. So on the new one, the way it works is the top portion is actually a part of the top now. The bottom portion is a part of the bottom now, while before it was all just a back piece. And then I created these hinges that use little M3 screws and nuts that then allow you to just pop open the back very easily and access anything if, if you need to. Um, and then again, it just closes like that. You can put the cable through and then it kind of just latches into place like that. So um, that was something that I really wanted to do just for um, kind of cleanliness and uh, I don't know just to make it a little bit of a nicer experience when having to access things like that um, I also made it a little bit easier to <clears throat> to install um, so the original one I did have holes on the top where you can stick a screwdriver through to reach the um, screws that connected the parts well I added them also on the bottom now so there's little holes in all the corners so that way you don't have to do all these weird angles or use little screwdrivers you can just stick the screwdriver through the hole to clamp it and then I also even created these little caps that you can print out to pop in the holes afterwards to kind of not leave a hole on the four corners um, of your arcade cabinet uh, and then on the first arcade, I had some wobble to it. This one doesn't really have any wobble. The other one had some pretty significant wobble. So what I did was, I didn't end up doing it on this one that I made, um, the V2, but it will be available on the file. There are four holes, pretty good sized ones. They're like M15 holes that are actually threaded. And I created little feet that can thread into them. So that way, if you have some wobble, you can use those feet and adjust them accordingly until your arcade is sitting level. So. Um, that was something that I wanted, especially after the wobble I was having on the first one. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, again, this one's got the translucent green and it's kind of like UV reactant. Um, so I have some like UV LEDs inside that shine through. I, don't, I didn't put them in the joystick, but I did put them in here. So it's kind of cool. The Emu Pi portion of it just glows. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. On the first one, I used a bunch of vinyl stickers. On this one, all of the kind of artistic looking, um, it, I don't know, glued on characters and stuff are all 3D printed. So um, I wanted to use as much 3D printing as possible with this guy. So this is the EmuPi V2 Mini Arcade. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I may eventually do a V3, but I'm pretty happy with where this is. This kind of reached the point of what I had initially set out to do when I made that one. And I think that I kind of implemented most of the things that I liked and didn't like about that one into what I think now is the easiest, best version of this. Um, not that there won't be more things that come up and down the line, but uh, overall I'm extremely happy with the way that this guy turned out. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you do like this cabinet, smack the like button. I did put a lot of time and work into printing it. Um, it ended up being probably close to three quarters of a kilogram for everything and in total maybe 80-ish hours. I did uh, 0.2 layer height, and I think I did 0.3 maybe on that one, so it's thinner lines. Um, I did 100% infill just because the walls are so thin that I just wanted everything completely solid. Um, and uh, yeah, the uh, oh, the black was actually printed on the JGORA A5 while the green was printed on the Ender 3. So anyways, on that note, I will end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and are all doing fantastic, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.